Namaste. So, in the last episode, Sambhartha was continuing his instructions to Parashuram. And Parashuram was feeling bewildered. He couldn't get it. So, Sambhartha explained, you can't get this teaching by intellect alone, you have to practice it. And you have to be initiated in that practice by someone who has realized it. So therefore, you have to approach a guru to get the result of this teaching. And he goes on in the final section of chapter 4 to explain exactly what that means. I'm going to read from the book here. So last time we concluded that knowledge cannot be got without serving the feet of Sri Tripurambika, and that service is not possible by any other means other than the grace of Guru Nanak. Association with noble persons is instrumental for the grace of the Guru, through which everything is achieved. Therefore, O Bhargava, go to Sri Guru Dattatreya. Now, Dattatreya is considered an incarnation of Shiva by the Shivites. <laughs> the Vaishnavas consider him an incarnation of Vishnu. Either way, it works out to be the same, that he's a divine being. He has all-pervading knowledge, sarvajna, omniscience. And of course, no one is better qualified to guide the disciple than God himself. By pleasing him through service, you will soon get your wants. How indeed can one obtain auspiciousness without the protection of the guru? It's not possible. The people today are so vain and so proud. They don't want to find a guru and surrender. They're afraid. Huh? They're afraid they'll lose their precious ego. <laughs> Look, you're going to lose it anyway. This body, the mind, your identity, uh, all your precious desires, and all this other stuff is just temporary. It will go away. It will disappear in time. So if you're attached to it, it's just going to bring suffering. Uh, the best thing is to remain free from attachment, surrender everything at the lotus feet of a realized guru, and learn, become what he molds you into. That's the auspicious path. Just as none other than the sun can lead a person who has lost his way in the darkness of the night, no one without service to guru can get happiness. Huh? Uh, just a, a little story from my own life. My guru engaged me in the service of editing his books, and I edited a whole big series of books in both Sanskrit, uh, the meanings of those Sanskrit words, and continuity editing, which is a special kind of editing to make sure the story that's being told is complete without any holes. After that, when I left the temple and entered householder life, by his grace, I got a job as a technical writer. And actually, it wasn't a job, it was a contract. So boom, I had my own business, I was a professional writer, I was earning more than double what I had ever made before in my life, and I was set. So I retired from that in 2001, and here I am. So see, association with the Guru gives not only spiritual, but also material blessings. It makes your life easy so that you can pursue self-realization as your primary uh, priority. Just as the maker of collyrium to the blind, there is no recourse other than the Guru. Lord Sadashiva himself due to compassion towards his devotees, is roaming in the form of a human being as Dathatreya. In the three worlds, 
who, although rich, can get satisfaction without taking shelter at the lotus feet of a guru. Therefore, quickly go from here to the feet of the guru. This whole first part of this book, of the first four chapters, is really just about the benefits and necessity of taking shelter of a guru. Have you noticed? Everything that happens, happens because of the blessings of the guru. And we'll see as we go through the book, this theme will expand until it encompasses a cosmic scope. <laughs> then worship him with pure devotion, free from deceit. What is not achievable in the three worlds if the guru is pleased? You can get anything you want. You want to become a demigod? No problem. Huh? You want to have a form just like God himself? Easy. Huh? You want moksha, liberation? No problem. Just please the guru and whatever you want will become a reality. Presently, he is living in his meritorious hermitage, situated on the mountain named Gandhanamdana, excuse me, Gandhamadana, occupied by accomplished yogis. I will go back. Be lucky. May your desires be fulfilled. So saying, Sambhartha went on the aerial path as Parshuram was seeing him. In a minute, Samvarta went beyond view into the northeast quarter, just like a mass of cloud driven away by the wind. Then, Parshuram, hearing the hastening words of Samvarta, decided to go to Guru Dattatriya. This is the end of the fourth chapter of the Mahatmya Kanda of Sri Tripura Rahasya. So, we already know from the previous chapters what happened. Huh? Parashuram went to Dattatreya. He studied and performed puja to Sri Tripurambika for 14 years, I think it was. And then he got to the point where he was unsatisfied with religious rituals. Huh? In other words, he went from being a Dvaita body to a Vishishta Dvaita body. He went from practicing Karma Yoga under Vedic instructions to practicing Bhakti Yoga under his uh, transcendental guru. And from that, he realized the real self. Uh -huh. He realized Brahman in truth, completely. So that's why he's accepted as a divine incarnation. Huh? Anybody who realizes the self is actually a divine incarnation. <laughs> but of course, they all display different opulences, qualities, and pastimes. Oh, the mosquitoes are bad this morning. And uh, they have different forms and different abilities and so on. So Dattatreya, his special ability was to give blessings to the conditioned souls and bring them beyond even bhakti to the uh, vivartavada. And of course, then going through the whole Raja Yoga until one realizes shunya, then one can enter into the ajatavada, which is full realization, complete enlightenment. This is the path. And this is the, really the story of my life. I started out in, in a Christian family, huh? Dualists, really actually sinful people. They were very deceptive. And uh, of course, meat eaters and like that. So gradually, step by step, I've gone through these four stages. So I can tell you, looking back at my life, that this is the real path. And actually, as I've mentioned several times, the context of Sri Vidya is so vast, it encompasses the whole three worlds. So any spiritual practice, any sadhana, any 
outlook, any view, uh, any philosophy that you can come up with fits somewhere within the context of Sri Vidya. Sri Vidya is huge, it's vast. So don't take it as just another religion huh? or, or just another cult or goddess or something like that. No, no. This is the spiritual whole and all other religions and practices fit very neatly within it. So we're going to study this and we're going to see how the power of the goddess pervades all the creation and how everything is actually going according to her direction. And she is given this power by Sadashiva, who appeared as Dattatreya to instruct Parashara and other sincere devotees. Aum Tatsat. Aum Harihi Aum.